welcome to yet another edition of A Few Minutes with the Mayor. My name is Damian Graham. I'm with the City of Raleigh. This is Nancy McFarland, our wonderful mayor. And this is sort of the uh, year in review. I remember growing up um, around Christmas time, all the TV shows had oh, yeah. sort of the flashback shows and uh, the Christmas show. I always loved those uh, flashback shows. So we're doing a variation of that. Uh, we are filming today in uh, Theater in the Park, which is located on uh, NC State's beautiful campus, where they have uh, the Santa Land Diaries currently performing. It's a story that tells the, st tells the story of Crumpet the Elf, who relives his tale of his brief stint working at Macy's Santa Land attraction in New York City. The play is based on David Sedaris's short story, Chronicles the Holiday Season, and is filled with charged, politically incorrect, irreverent commentaries of fellow elves, Santa's true colors, and the raucous adults and children who come to sit on St. Nick's lap. This is running, uh, started on December 9th, and will run through Sunday, December 18th. If you are in the Christmas spirit and want to see more Christmas uh, plays, head on over to the Performing Arts Center. All right, so on with the show. We are ready, if you're ready. I'm ready. Uh, so Mayor, it has been a very full year. Uh, lots of different challenges and surprises that I think no one saw coming. So let's talk about some of those. Okay. But let's start off with a good positive. Looking back over the year, what do you consider to be some of the biggest accomplishments uh, by the council in 2016? Well, you know, consistently our biggest challenge we hope is one of our biggest accomplishments right. and our biggest challenge is growth the number of people coming and I think we've we are continuing to do a good job of accommodating the growth and trying to balance that with people that are here but most importantly keeping the character of Raleigh that is been our biggest challenge and certainly that's going to be the biggest in the future but we did have um, you know, with Dick's Park, we celebrated the one year anniversary and we had a big party on the hottest day of the year, Destination Dick's. I think it was 104 or 107 or something. Was, In the shade. Yeah, it was hot. But we still <laughs> had over 25,000 people come out. Um, it was a great partnership with the Dick's Park Conservancy. So that, that was a lot of fun. And um, we've gotten our planning for the master planning off to a great start. There, uh, we've outlined how all of the um, committees are going to be set up, how it, citizen input is going to take place. We have the executive team. We're, uh, we've had applications from all over the world for lead designer and teams to take this on. So the interest is incredible, and there's a lot of excitement around that. Um, we did some more great work with the arts. Uh, we started Oak City Sessions, yes, which did. you yeah. can see right here on RTN, right. featuring local artists, which have just been some incredible, incredible um, music performances. Of course, we had another great, successful World of Bluegrass downtown. Absolutely. September as always was off the hook with um, SparkCon and African American Cultural Festival and just it's amazing. Hopscotch, oh my gosh, Hopscotch was hu huge this year. And so I think that as a city, you know, we continue to support and celebrate local artists and we're also continuing to really grow our reputation as a center for the arts. Um, we just passed the Oak City Outreach Center, which is going to, uh, it's a project we're doing with the county. And so it's a facility that's going to have all resources that people need uh it's you know it's centered around the homeless but it's also you know there are a lot of people on the edge of right. losing their homes and so you know whether you need help with medical coverage or whether you need help finding housing or whether you need help in you know something your children are going through i mean there are just so many resources mental health referrals all physical i mean all kinds of things and the great thing is it's all going to be under one roof mm -hmm. so people won't have to spend weeks you know going around the county trying to find all those things so we're very proud of that and looking forward to seeing that take off well, that's a good list an impressive list um so you know we never know what's around the corner and certainly this year provided uh some 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 surprises. So what, in your opinion, <laughs> were some of the biggest surprises? Uh, um, you know, one of the biggest surprises is, has been the impact of the national dialogue. Mm. You know, it has very much, you know, we've always, as a city, we've focused on Raleigh and we love our city and we've done incredible things to grow it economically. And, and obviously we're the state capital, so we have a lot of interaction with the state. And we know, you know, the federal, I've uh, been lucky enough to have, a, federal contacts and be able to call on federal resources. 
but I think this last election and just the contentiousness of it and uh, the outcomes and, and just the change in, um, it has changed our dialogues within the city too. And I think the biggest thing that's impacting us is just pe uncertainty. People are just don't know in their lives what's gonna happen and so since we are the one that are in contact with people the most, we see that coming through a lot. Um, you know, the other biggest thing last year was, I think, the passage of HB2. And you asked me what surprises. I think that the, um, you know, the surprise was we always have, you know, we never know what kind of legislature is going to come. But this one was passed very quickly. <clears throat> and, um, you know, the, the impact on it has just been phenomenal on the city of Raleigh, you know, the convention center. And it's one of those things that if you look at the convention center and how they book out two or three years, I mean, yes, we had people come last summer because they'd already signed contracts. Sure. But it's really the next couple years. And the thing that's, you know, whether it's concerts that cancel or, um, you know, basketball games or big conferences, the the people that are really hurt are those industries that are either working in hotels or hotel maids that may only be hired the number of days we have beds filled. It's people parking cars, it's restaurants, it's all the service industries, you know, for concerts, it's caterers, electricians, and carpenters. So that's really the industry that has been hurt a great deal. And of course, you know, our ability to recruit business and for business to be able to recruit the talent they want. So it, it's been a, a multi-phase. There's been a lot of discussion about it. I'm not sure what's going to happen. Um, and then I think the other biggest surprise, of course, was probably Hurricane Matthew. Um, um, but not only was it a, a surprise the way it affected us, but, you know, our emergency responders, not only did they go out and do a, a terrific job, but to see, you know, the way they went immediately to help other communities and the way our community has come together. You know, we had the Sunday supper. We had a thousand people come and eat together on Fayetteville Street, we closed down all to raise money to help fellow North Carolinians. And so it was a tragedy, but it's also um, obviously um, brought us together in many ways we hadn't, hadn't thought of before. So you've alluded to a lot of this. What do you think uh, were some of the biggest challenges? I mean, that sort of the surprises lead to the challenges, but. Well, I mean, obviously the, I think the impact of HB2 was probably one of the biggest challenges. Um, and of course, growth is continuing to be. It's whether it's traffic. Um, of course, we did pass the Wake County referendum, so that's okay. going to be incredibly helpful as we look at not only Raleigh and Wake County, but the Triangle, because this area is just going crazy, you know. And having grown up in the D.C. area, I know what we're <laughs> I know what we're looking at. So. I think it's very fortunate that we're all recognizing that now and taking steps to try and mitigate what we can. I mean, I've had to drive to Durham and Chapel Hill a couple of times in the past week, and it's, mm -hmm. it's just, wow. I used to work in RTP, so I know it well, and it's mm -hmm. just not, not Well, fun. we had a meeting, you know, we have the Capital Area Metropolitan Planning Organization, which is the, right. uh, but then Durham has one. So we had a meeting for the two of us, which is incredibly helpful because we really are functioning as one large right. region, even if you just take the three big, big hospitals, you know, Duke and UNC and Wake Med, and think about people and Rex. I mean, how many people live in one place and work in the other? I mean, that's 10,000 employees each place. At so, that's it, right. yeah. All right, so Mayor, we, we've talked about the surprises and the challenges. Uh, let's be optimistic and think about what the future holds. So if we had a magic crystal ball <laughs> and we could put it right here, what would you see, uh, what can we expect in 2017? Well, uh, I know the uh, first thing, not the first thing, but uh, we hope to have the consultant, the lead consultant and team on for the Dix planning in February. So that's very exciting because then it really um, it starts engaging the public and everybody can really start to see the movement forward and understand what we're doing. So I'm excited about that. Um, you know, uh, we do, um, obviously we have our, like I said, our usual big things every year and we're certainly talking to festivals and things trying to get, as, as, the city loves a festival. They do. I mean, I'm telling yeah. you, this city loves a festival. <laughs> so um, I've got some really cool things, but I can't talk about them yet because they're <laughs> just in the works. So maybe, you know, 
in the next couple of months, we'll be able to roll those out and talk about them. But there's a couple really exciting new things that we're working on and everything from employment to more things with the arts. And it's, uh, you know, I think also the fact that we now have a plan and a dedicated source of funding for affordable housing. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of talk about that. That's one of the things that comes along with growth. The prices rise and, you know, we we have stepped up and said it's important and we're able to work with companies that this is what they do. And that really takes our dollar and leverages it multiple times over. So I think the fact that we have uh, set this as a priority, we're going to start to see more and more. Last year, we had two citywide community conversations, and this was in response, you know, to national dialogue. And we had some incidents here, and it was about bringing all these different levels of the community together, all these different people to talk about everything from race to police relations. And it was incredible to see the diversity at the tables, nice. all religions, all ages. I mean, and the open and honest conversations they had. And I think that really reflects who we are. And starting, uh, we've taken all that data back and we're really gonna break it down to areas of the city because you know the issues in one section of the city may be very different than, we know they are from sure. other sections. So then we're gonna start to host a series of more local, you know, around the city, hopefully to engage more people uh, about things that are important to them in their neighborhood. And it's really not, just us talking at people or, you know, it's, it's about how do we work together to build a better community? You know, um, taking what rose to the top, whether it's employment or, you know, maybe after school issues or whatever, we're going to bring those resources to those meetings where we know that there are certain issues to give people a chance. Because I think that there are a lot of um, offerings out there people don't know about and conversely there's a lot of needs that maybe we or the county or the schools don't know about. Sure. So it really is I'm excited to be working with counties and schools and everybody but more importantly I'm excited about people engaging and taking ownership you know de helping to develop their neighborhood into what they want it to be and that's what it's, it's really about. So um, that's going to be um, very important it's important for me. I know it's important for the community next year. Absolutely. Thanks. Well, it should be interesting. I know there are a lot of folks, myself included, who are ready to say goodbye to 2016 <laughs> uh, and excited about what the future may hold. So um, we will be optimistic about what's coming. I'm too. So last question. It's the holiday season. So what is a uh, favorite memory from Christmas for you or a holiday tradition that you might have in your family? Well, I think my favorite memory is was always making cookies with my mother and my grandmother. And you know, they had this special recipe. They, uh, I have my mother's rolling pin now, so I'm getting better. They're never as good as your mother's, right, you know. Right. But then I remember making them with my kids and now making them with my granddaughter. So it's, you know, I've still got my mom and grandmother's cookie cutters. So it, it does just really tie it together and bring the importance of family back. So that is a great, wholesome uh, memory. <laughs> my family's a little different. We have my mother loves finding these Santas that are dressed in green. So not traditionally Santa Claus is dressed really? in red, but they, he's, he's dressed in green. And she's found hundreds of them. And every year she gives me another one and thinks it's so funny <laughs> to give me these green Santas. And so now I've got a storage problem. For green health. Santas. Green Santa Claus. So if anyone's in the mood for a green Santa, just, just give us a call at the city. We'll see what we can do about that. Maybe you need to start spreading around the offices in the city. I, you know, I mean, we're a pretty <laughs> green city. You yeah, know, we, we can take city. that on. There we go. We'll spin it. All right. Well, Mayor, thank you as always for taking this time. Thank and thank you. you for all the work you've done this year. Sure. And, happy uh, to be here. We're glad to have you and, and happy holidays to everyone. We will see you next year. Thanks.